Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men and women. Welcome to Tony Commander, J.R. Kabukwa Chesson Talk Show. Today is January the 4th, the fourth day of the new year. What have we got to show for ourselves? We look around us, we look at our nation, we look at our people, we, are, we look at the discombobulated state our society is in. And we must ask ourselves, what hope is there for a new and blessed Liberia. Welcome to Tony Commander, J.R. Kupupa Chesson Talk Show. Let's get into my lesson. <clears throat> Let me put my topics up. Let's see where we're going from here this morning. Oh, I want to remind you that I'm requesting a donation of $5 from every Liberian citizen, home and abroad. So I can open the horizon of my people in a way that I best feel we educate, enlighten, and provide a broad spectrum of diversified projects, events, and activities to Liberia and Liberian people. I'm not making a big request for continual contribution. I just want us to be part and parcel of one collective effort that I will head with your blessing to change our society. We can't all depend on government. One person alone can't do it. But I will set up the projects for us with the people that I can depend on and trust and ensure that wherever we put our mind to, it will be void of useless politicking, void of useless discussions and endless Stupidity. And when I'm handing the resources that you provide for me to do things in your interests, it will and shall be and get done. Aluta! Continua. So, my topics for today are changing Liberian Americans mind, ment mentalities toward thinking, Americanism. Changing Liberian Americans' mentalities toward thinking, Americanism. We'll get more into that. Two, Liberia's opposition parties' plight for 2021. Oh, sorry, I meant 2023. For 2023 general election. Let me just correct that. I'll be right back with you. Okay. Everything moving so fast with these different years and did everybody. I'm an old man, you know. I get caught up in all this thing here. Excuse me. So, there it is. Liberia's Opposition parties plight for 2023 general election. Uh, opposition parties, I'm talking about CPP, the four, the four parties that have this coalition to compete against George Weir and his four party coalition. So here we are. And number three, leadership ideals among 
young librarians. These are topics that will address the various issues in our community right now. I fix my classes around the issues, the circumstances, the events that occur in Liberia and impact the lives and livelihood of Liberian people, especially in Liberia. So let's get into my topic today. In the reason My first topic is changing Liberian American mentalities, as you put in the post P as the two mentalities. Because as we do these things, so I chose this topic because it is important that as our young Liberian Americans living in the United States of America and dealing with some of the issues and problems in our country and trying to understand them and put some reason to them, we have to understand that our children are still young. They may be educated too, but they're just as young as the children in Liberia that live in Liberia, people like Koji and all these kind of people. So our mentalities in America cannot mirror the mentalities of our people in Liberia. It can happen if we want to go and change our country. You see, so before we can go to Liberia, Liberian Americans have to develop a mentality that match Americanism as it is. And one of the good examples I touched on in my viewing of the different topics we talk about on Facebook dealing with the Liberian community, when I watching your senior Martin Poyer, and her activities in the Georgia State Political Affairs. She shows it of how she's going out there advocating, promoting her candidate, going from door to door, doing efforts to promote the candidate of her choice. So these are the things that impact the thinking of Liberian youth and people in this community that need to mirror Americanism in this country. Yes, we are Liberians, but we are also Americans. And if I, we think like our parents and focus primarily on what's happening in Liberia and forget that we live in the greatest country in the... I'm trying to take up losing my jacket so I can get a little breath. And you forget that we live in the greatest country in the world and fail to understand the workings of this society, the politics of the society, our impact on the politics or the body politic of this nation. We're not really develop our learning capacities to really have to change Liberia. The thinking of the people in Liberia is mediocre. Yes, there are a few Liberians that have advanced in their thinking, but for us to go home and have a major impact on Liberian society, Liberian education, Liberian leadership, Liberian historical and civic foundation, we have to understand where we live and be here and understand that charity begins at home. It doesn't matter where you live. It begins at home. You have to plan the roots in your society where you live. 
And if we come here and live for 20, 30 years, and we do not, we just talk American politics. Oh, do, 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 do. we act like we know about America. But when it comes to the nitty gritty, we know it mentally, but practically, we haven't experienced it because we haven't tried to intermingle or intermix with mainstream American society, activities, events, political affairs, things that impact mainstream American society. When we say mainstream, we're talking about the things that majority of the people do and like. Not only black people. We know the majority of people in America, sorry man, I keep hitting my thing because it's right next to my arm. In America, are diverse. They're not monolithic. So when you go to mainstream society, you're dealing with white people, black people, Hispanic people, Jewish people, everybody in the world. And you got to grab an understanding of the greater American society, how to interact with people in the greater American society. Yes, there are many races and cultures in America, but there's a mainstream American society. And that's the mainstream you got to understand. It's not limited to one culture. It's the American culture. You got to understand how American people think, how they relate to things. If you're dealing with their politics, you got to know when you interact with them, how to grasp their thinking, their understanding, their interactions. So you can understand where you stand in that society, how you can interact with that society to get the people to understand that you understand their thinking. You may not think the same, you may not speak the same way. You may not have the same accent, accents, but you have the ability to eloquently get to them to vocalizing your expressions and having an understand that you understand them too, just as much as they can understand you. And that's the beauty of Americanism. So for us to impact the politics, the government, the leadership of this country, majority of us who serve in the leadership of Liberian communities here in America have to understand the mechanism of politicking, the mechanism of engaging with leaders in this country so that they don't, they don't honest, look at us as only helping, giving us a happy hand. They look at us as American citizens who understand the inner workings of the American society. Because all the time we be in this country, people been looking at us, at us as an outside community that needs a happy hand. And that's not our destiny in this country. That way you read my introduction to this show, I put there, I'm a, I'm a Thomas Jefferson descendant through Sally Hemings, the, the black woman that had six children for Thomas Jefferson. And we got to understand that many of us have roots in American society that penetrate to the, to the deepest roots of American society. And it ain't matter whether it's white, black, blue, or yellow, what our forefathers did in this country, whether they knew it or not, they gave all the, all the right to claim inheritance for any root of American society. And that is the root of Americanism. And many of us come from that root, and we got to understand how to identify with it, how to claim it at ours, ours, because there is no way we can avoid our Americanism. Not in this country, not in Liberia. America is the greatest nation in the world. It's a pride and honor to identify with America. But we got to understand 
that if we are not, not accepted by American people as part of mainstream American society, where well, we have a say in this country. And when we say it, we base our say on constitutional institutions, constitutional backings, and the rule of law. We are not ignorant. We are not ignorant as Americans, as Liberian Americans. We have to understand where we stand. And once we understand where we stand in American society and our mentalities, do Liberia is able to afford the splitting of our minds to accept our American roots as well as our Liberian roots and be able to understand the complexities of these roots that we are dealing with. Because if you don't understand it, you'll be confused. But you gotta be guided into understanding your roots of Americanism and of Liberianism. You gotta understand where they are similar and where they differentiate. And if you can't tell the difference, you will not be blessed. Because in everything we do as Christians, we must buttress our beliefs, our ideals, our strengths and our weaknesses on our understanding, knowledge, and wisdom of the prayer of serenity. God gave me the wisdom. They didn't say educational. They're talking about discernment so that your mind and your eyes will open so you know the things you can change in life. That you have the God-given ability to change and not be afraid of change. Like bringing the war crimes court to Liberia. Why we need a war crimes court? We are men of reputation. We are men of education. We should be men of integrity, men of law and order, men who are conscious of the plights of our people. And if we indeed love them, how can we find resolution to their sufferings and pains and losses of the wealth? and riches of our country. So that one aspect of the prayer of serenity, what you can change, those are earthly, physical things that God has empowered us with as men and women and educated people, enlightened, to know the things we can change and the things we cannot. Because the things we can change, we can get up and change them and stop making excuses and stop calling for war crimes court when we got our constitution and laws to guide us about against criminals like Prince Johnson and Manuel Weah and Ellen Johnson Selif and Robert Selif. Robert Selif should be in jail for corrupting the miners of Liberia. Just based on our crystal thing and, and, and confession or how as a kid, Robert was making love to him on the football field. I mean, as a football chief of the team, who could jail our man for that? There is no limitation to crimes in Liberia. So we have to understand that if these leaders in our government are the very perpetrators of crimes against our people, what will stop the Liberian people from rising up and saying, enough is enough and meaning it? But if we keep crying wolf, wolf, wolf for the things we can change. We keep sitting to the table and talking over and over for time immemorial and making laws over and over again that we never enforce, that we never follow through with. How? 
how, how on earth will we be blessed to know the things we can change? Our lost people, our leaderless people, a deceived people, a blind people, a gullible people cannot be blessed with the wisdom, with the innate knowledge to know the things that can change. No matter what kind of Western education you get, what kind of African education you get, what kind of Chinese education you get, what kind of Russian education you get, what kind of Hague education you get, what kind of any kind of education you get. If you're not blessed with wisdom of how to innately use the education that you inherit or blessed to achieve formally or informally, you will not know yourself your innate abilities, powers, and strengths. Nor will you know the things you can change. Then the other aspect of the prayer of serenity is the things you cannot change. Don't mess with them. Because this is where the stupidity come in. When you have the things you can change on one thing, hand, and you do not understand or can relate to, your innate ability to change the things you have, then you go after changing things that is God's, that only God can change and you don't have the ability to change it. But you keep believing time and time again that if you recircle the same criminals, you recircle the same rogues, you live on a policy of a pink stick, you live on a policy of forgiveness, and you know your lives are constantly placed at risk, threatened, and in danger, in peril, by the very people you look to as leaders. How? How? How can you be blessed with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? You can't. Look at our look at our educated leaders today. Ellen didn't know better. She went to an elite institution, Harvard University. That's an institution when you graduate from, you have a silver spoon in America. You have a silver spoon in America. That's one of the elite institutions in this country. Not only because of the parental and, and, and wealthy people, and donations and support for those institutions. No, those institutions are reputable institutions for learning, research, and scientific advancements. And once you go into those institutions and come out, when you, your name is mentioned in America or throughout the world, people put you at the highest level of educational acumen. Of progress and advancement on a personal level. So, when Ellen Johnson Sirleaf is president of Liberia, she is an example of mainstream American society. She has a silver spoon in American society. So, for Ellen to come to Ellen Sirleaf to come to Liberia. And betray us because our people thinking of Americanism is mediocre. All your education about American politics and everything rests on what you learn from TV, where you hear from other people. None of you got real mainstream American society, it's mainstream living. You can see from the senior. And from Yah and Yasinde, that she is advanced on a different level than many Liberians in society. She's not there yet, but she's putting her foot in the door. She's pushing it open. She's making herself known in her state. And that way it starts. You gotta, if you can't change your home state, 
if you can't make yourself known in your home state, if you can't participate in efforts to make changes in your home state, how will you do it in Liberia, which is a nation and a state on its own? So with all of us advocates fighting for Liberia's interests, all of us should be able to go home and be in America at the same time and change Liberia. And change America's policy toward Liberia for the betterment of Liberian people. By impacting how America reacts and interacts with the Republic of Liberia because we are Americans. No white man can determine who we are. The law determines who we are. History determines who we are. And it is documented. There's nothing can change it. You know, although they put barriers before us all the time, from the founding in America, they put barriers before us so we cannot claim our rights to be treated as Americans, a part of the system. And we're still going through that because people like Donald Trump, whose fathers have written books and dis disparaged black people and sought to impair it and, and, and uh, paralyze us through poverty, sufferings, and deaths. Are the same people with the same consciousness or unconsciousness, whatever you want to see it, because they are conscious of what they're doing to destroy our lives. They have books, senators of America got books on their desks telling them how to enslave black people. What kind of country is this? That we're following a president who has gone insane and want to overturn the election of the United States of America, which is a criminal offense against the United States of America. And we're still debating the insanity of this man and the people behind him. And we haven't put restrictions on Donald Trump yet. The man going above and beyond the device or devices put in place to secure America, to secure our system of democracy. And this man is stepping on it and trampling on it like his father owns America. And American people are joining this man joining this man to destroy us. People trying to change what God has ordained and they cannot change. But they're fighting to change it. You see how insane and stupid they look? Because they know the things they can change. They know Donald Trump was defeated fair and square. I'm not even talking about his ideals, his idealism, his politics or anything. I'm talking about the reality of the fact that this man was defeated. Whether he believes he's a winner throughout his life, it has nothing to do with what the American people have done. We have sent a loud and clear message to this man that you cannot lead American people as we are living on your father's plantation. We are not living on your father's plantation. We have laws and order in the United States of America that are intended to unify, integrate, and solidify the peoples of the United States of America. And one man who is insane with power, who is insane with criminality, cannot take over the presidency of the United States of America and try to divide us into tribes and native people like bananas republics. We are United States of America. Yes, we have been wrong. We have been trampled upon for years. But this democracy is our democracy too. We've been fighting for it. And we come thus far, we're not going back. And no crazy man 
No insane man. No man who has lost all his marbles because he's a loser will put us back into the cages. Congress, rise up and take charge of this country. Put this president to sleep. Let him sit in the corner, suck on a lollipop, and watch the action until January 20th. And all you run amok senators and representatives in the American House too, and Senate, you better be advised. This is not Americanism. And somebody from the American Liberian Society got to stand up and represent our country, our people, in telling people in this country, get a grip on yourselves. Our lives are at stake. And if you don't know what you can change and cannot change, you are on the wrong track of life. So you see, my Liberian people, the same principle applies everywhere in the world. Know the things you can change. Know the things that you cannot change. See? And understand that through these things, these two things, understanding and knowing how to apply them, you will gain serenity, peace. Not only peace in reality, in our lives, but peace mentally and spiritually. Because we understand the mechanism, the mysteries of life. So, okay, let me move on to my next topic. Liberia's opposition party. We got to spend too long, much on the topic, so let me just move my second topic. Liberia's opposition party. CPP. Liberty Party. Unity Party. All Liberian Party. And what the last party? ANC Party. Alternative National Party. What's your problem? What's your problem? This is the same problem of Liberian society. The deception and lies and trickery and, and, and uselessness cannot continue over and over. You know that you want to change Liberia. We need leaders in our country. If you people cannot be different from George Weirden, if you people cannot show that you are more educated, more uh, uh, idealistic, more sincere, more profound, more democratic than CC, uh, CDC, why should I bring people follow you? And this is the reason I can't join in the party. Because the deception among Liberian people too much. And you got to sit down and waste your time arguing about people on these stupid principles. You got four parties. You don't know who's going to be planning. Why you want to form a small committee to sit down and decide who will be president? And put names in a, in a bag so 100 people can go and put their hands in the bag and decide who pick up, how many pick up, people pick up the same name to name them president and vice president. What kind of insanity is that? We cannot continue on these deceitful trends, even with the CDC. They got George Weir now, okay, he's president. But when George Weir term finished in 2023, who they going to take pick, pick up to run that party again? They got to do the same thing that ANC, that CPP needs to do now. We cannot run amok our political system. So I'm just only saying this. I'm only getting involved with CPP politics because we must change our country. We must get rid of this idiot, George Weir. We need a team of educated people who are patriotic, sincere, loyal, and serious 
very serious about changing our country, punishing our rogues, going after our money. That's the first priority for Liberia right now. We got too much money out there in people's private bank accounts that belong to Liberia. And these people cannot run around being millionaires while honest Liberians are penniless. That is not equality. That is not justice. That is not the Liberian rule of law. And for us to change that, we got to have men and women who can stand up to speak for Liberian society. If we don't want to go back into war, we don't want a military takeover. Because right now, as it is, I ready to come in there and rule it show. Military. I won't be president. I see no president in my future book. I see military. And I'm applied. I'm not a civilian man. I'm military. That's why I don't want to join power and, and politics. But when you see the things so run amok, when you see our leaders so useless and deceitful, when you see the ideas of democratic leadership is so backwards and, and crooked, and it doesn't provide any sense of equity, of fairness, of justice, not only to the party, to the partisan. You know, say partisans to the partisans. So, you're not showing any loyalty to the partisans. So, there must be some remedy to the dysfunctional living, the dysfunctional state of living, the deceitful state of living, the broken down system of living in Liberia among Liberian people. If the party wants to lead Liberia, you're going to show you got money. Because we don't want a bunch of leaders coming here hustling. The hustling got to stop. Nobody can come and hustle on the Liberian government. You either come to stop the hustlers or you get out of the game. You can't lead us. And the dead kill our people the way they kill those four auditors. If that ever happened again, Liberia, we got to set the safeguards to ensure that our leaders are not the murderers of our people. And only the Liberian people can do that. That's why with the CPP trying to change our country from being headed by rogues, murderers, and criminals had to prove that they themselves are not the same criminal, deceitful, and useless Liberians. So you know these four people running, there may be four candidates. Now we hear Ellen Johnson, Salif, got a new group coming in called by the uh, uh, Alternative and Liberation Party, something like that. We hope that they kill us, and they may try to draw another party from there, from the CPP, to go with Ellen. Can we live like this forever? Darius Dillon, Ben and I, Yuri, Alec Cummings, Borka will not make it to 2023. Boga, I told you, it's time for renewed leadership. He will not make it because of health, because he's too old, because he's not strong enough to run campaigns all through the country. It's a fact. And I don't care who come and pushing their luck, saying that their UP will rise. And I don't have time for who rises or who doesn't rise in CPP. My only thing is how the leadership will be structured so that we can trust that this democracy will perpetuate the ideals of justice, equality, freedom, and a Liberian way of life. 
we got to form a unified system of living. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry can just come in our government and try to change it. And this is the kind of system we need to plan if we want our country to grow and prosper like a civilized nation. So CPP, you got to get your act together. There can be no way you will select leaders without the masses of your party participating in it. Your partisans must be part of the process. Because there is no way you will have 100 persons from each party meeting in their room and deciding some kind of crocodile way to elect a leader. There will not be fairness. There will always be allegations or accusations of unworthiness, untrustworthiness, unfairness. So you got to bring it out to the public. Let's see, first of all, if all of these candidates can hold their own, if all of these parties with their candidates can hold their own, and if they can hold their own, there has to be a primary. There must be a primary. Because if anybody coming to take over the leadership of Liberia, it can't be balanced on only a few people. They got to demonstrate that they can have the support, the confidence, the peace, the joy of the Liberian people repose in them. So you got to go to every county, just a presidential election. Every partisan, partisan in the party got to vote. That will ensure that everybody in the party agrees on who the president is for that party. Who the standard bearer is that's going to compete in the national election. Because the trust and confidence of the Liberian people has been waned, destroyed, stepped upon, run amok, deceived, flushed down the toilet for too long. For too long. You see, I mean, that's why I don't want to participate in government. I just want to sit down and ensure that they are fairness in the system. I won't be no government minister. That's why I tell you, you give me support. If I get $5 from every Liberian, I would feel satisfying, satisfied sitting down in Liberia and having my own law firm to fight for women and criticize everything that the government is doing that I cannot handle. I can't do it alone. I can have younger lawyers under me who understand our ideal and concepts that we're going to have for the progress and development of our own people. We can't depend on the government because right now I want people to change our, give our women freedom. So I want to run a semi pro bono firm. I don't know if we'll be able to do a pro bono for it, but I know majority of the cases for women I would take would be pro bono. You wouldn't have to pay me. But we have to understand that when we set up structure in our country, the laws that bind these things that impact the people in our country must be obeyed and followed. Our leaders must be held to higher levels of accountability and responsibility for implementation of the laws in our country. Because we can't have foreigners coming, having children and leaving. We can't have people coming and, and disrespecting our women and leaving. The laws and concept of women in our society, especially in our traditional society, has to change. The concept of women in our traditional society is that of chattel. They are properties. That has to change within the traditional society. And it has not been addressed. So how can we change our societies when our traditional society is now coinciding with our Western society? They got to coincide some kind of way. That you can do the traditional society for a while, but when you reach a certain level, you got to give up that traditional society and 
and, and, and in, amalgamate into mainstream American Liberian society, which is worldwide society, Western oriented society, Christian, Islam, Buddhist, all of those religions that are major in the world oriented society. And that's why our country is not a Christian nation, but we're founded on Christian principles to, to afford everybody the kind of mental and spiritual equality, unification, solidarity, thinking that we all need to move forward as one people and one nation. So we need leaders who would demonstrate happy in issue in the first place that they are honest, that they're not want, they don't want to play politics with the Liberian people uh, mentality. Don't play politics with our young children. Set the foundation on which they will learn and understand that as men and women of the Republic of Liberia, they have responsibilities and duties upon which the very foundation of their lives livelihood and future rest. Leadership ideals among young Liberians. What are some of the ideals of leadership that our young people have toward our people, their behavior or behaviors, their attitudes, their thinking? to Liberia and Liberian people. You know, when people come from good nations and go to Africa, we have a sense of superiority because of coming from a, a well-developed society and going back home and see our people begging us and living in conditions that we will consider terrible. People got barrels of water in their bathroom, in the in the rooms, and all of that. You know, those are things we wanna do in America if we are poor, if you're not part of the mainstream American society. Or you're not trying to live well and work hard in America. But people who live well and work hard. And you may not be rich, but you achieve some kind of comfortability to live like regular American people. You know, to have your place in your home where you can keep decent and nice. They're normal people. They're normal American citizens. And that's good. So when we live in those kind of environments, when we go home, we lose that sense of empathy, of kindness. Sometimes, some people do. The way you see most people go home, they come in and say, oh man, I enjoy the country. I enjoy. And then other people come and say, man, the people are suffering, man. This is terrible. Because those who go and say they enjoy, they are blind mentally and spiritually to the sufferings of our people. Most of the people who go there and act like the smarter than the Liberian people when the people want 
change their money for two two hundred dollars, like Brian dollar for so and so. You know, I won't get into who they they who are talking to recently or not. I'm just talking the story. We have to care for our people. We have to care for our people. They are Liberian people. And we know their plight. We know the people haven't gotten it paid for months. We know masses of people don't have jobs. We know our people are suffering spiritually, mentally, and physically. So we have to understand their plight. I feel it too when I go to Liberia. Everywhere you turn, people want money. People want money. That's why, you know, you got to talk to them nicely. You know, when I do things, when people do things for me, like that small change, why do I care about it? Even if it was one American dollar, what is one American dollar? The people trying to cheat you out of a dollar, it will kill you. It will not kill you. What's what's so big in the money? The people in the street that be trying to change and think that we kill you. It's not that big. If you can work around with 500, 600 big notes of a Liberian dollar on one side, American dollar, you can afford to spare a dollar here and there. The people want something, and you will leave a tip. That way, when I go to Liberia, some of the people to be shocked. Because the scene where I live in America, the scene where I live in Liberia. If I go to somewhere and I buy food, I tip the people. That's the same thing I do in Liberia. I ain't got to fight for change. Why would I fight for change? If the people serve me, I tip them. But even in America, Liberian people do not tip. We do not tip, and we do understand that it is a, this is a country where you might tip, and you can't tip just what you want to tip. No, they have a system of tipping you. Many of the people in America live on tips too. So and when you tip people, you got to understand that's a gratuity rate for tipping people. If it's not in the bill, if it, not say, if it doesn't say gratu- gratuity included, that means the people not getting tip. Gratuity is tip. Once it's in a bill and you see it on a bill, you know they're getting tip in the thing. So it's your choice to tip them or not. And I still tip them. And I still tip them. You know, because I work in America too. Life is hard in this country too. It's not easy. When you're working that eight hours, you pull in that eight hours. It's not like Black like Liberia where you can take off and make excuses and see you're going to do this. It can't happen if you're working for companies in America. You're going to lose your job. This is not America. I mean, sorry, this is not Liberia. So you have to understand this is a total so different society. And if you don't understand how to live in society, this society, you cannot help your people in the Liberian society because your mind is clouded. Your mind is selfish. You know, you all you're thinking about yourself. You got to know that if you're taking somebody out to dinner or lunch or something, you got to tip. It's a part of life in America. When I buy coffee, I tip. Especially if it, if it wants something for the coffee, I don't take the change if I got it. Because those, those children working behind the counter, not working for a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks. And if these people in America go into that same problem, problem, what do you think about our own Liberian people that have not gotten paid for months? Now listen to Patrick Key. He's seen Jefferson Koji at the Memorial City Hall has not paid the people for months. And even the police cannot talk about it because every time the police open their mouth, they, he jails them for one or two months. That's the process in Liberia. They jail the police officers to discipline them without just justification. You can't jail police officers like that. Bono used to do it to me while I used to work with him too. He's a lot while I challenge him. Yeah, because I challenge you. 
if my director did something wasn't right, I challenged him. I said, director, what you did it for? You know, he said, he said, oh yeah, you challenged me? Lock this man up for the day. They put me in there. I was there the whole day. But the Liberia policing. That way you say I was not scared to go to jail. That Liberian policing. They put you in jail. My papa put me in jail too. So what what I gotta worry about? Huh? These are the kind of discipline going on in our country. And if you can do it to law enforcement people, what do you think the law enforcement people will do to the citizens? That's brutality against the employees of the Liberian government. So if you brutal to our employees and can put them, detain them, violate their rights to freedom, with all justification, with all due process, there's a disciplinary process in the police force. In every police force that our people got to go through. So if our leaders can just jail our police officers like that, with all due process or the rule of law, what do you expect of the police against the Liberian people? So when we go home to Liberia, our mindset must change. Many Liberians in this society here in America are not part of mainstream American society. Yes, they go to school and things. Some of them mix, but some of them come right back because they are, are disciplined by their parents. They are under the control of their parents. No matter whether they, they're in college or not, they still come home to their parents. That's the Liberian way. And if they're doing job. Their parents knowing their whereabouts, except those who don't have parental control. And those are the ones that lose out on life. And those who have parental control, who are not American nice in the right perspective. If they're not Mer American nice in understanding the yes. You can't beat your children in America, but that don't mean you can't discipline them. That don't mean you can't discipline your children. And that don't mean you can't spank your children. Children don't brutalize them. But you can spank your children. You can slap them on the butt. Let them call police. The police would slap them on the butt too. But you can't kick the children and use belt buckle in order to beat the children. No. If they're wrong, there are different kind of punishment. But train your child in the way a child should grow and you have no need to be afraid of them calling the police on you. If you train your child to know and understand that you are their only strength to life and they got to work, they got to face the hardship of life, they got to be disciplined. You have problems. This is America. Everybody can not raise their children like Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby type of children are an exception. Their father is wealthy. Their mother is wealthy. They are educated. They are elite. All Liberian people are not like that. When you're raising your children, you got to discipline them for small. You can't talk to them like Big Cosby talk to their children. Their children are elite children. From small, they've been having a spoon in their mouths. And they are conditioned through their parents' education, enlightenment, and, and progress and advancement to pursue something in life too. If you don't see your parents progressive and out there working and doing things, you will never have the mind to get up and do the same thing. All of you will just lay down in the house and sleep and don't want to do nothing and act lazy and act useless. But if you got parents, you see every morning getting up and going to work and earning a living and, and making plans and sitting at the, at the table eating and talking about the daily affairs, you, your kid, you will grow up differently 
Then parents, you come home, they're sleeping on the couch every day. They have drunk. They got a weed on the floor. You know you ain't going nowhere. But your parents, your guidance, your aunts and uncles who are educated and elite impress upon you from a child the standards of living that you must follow. Sometimes you don't even have to spank your children. You just discipline them too. Lockdown time, go in your room time, and all those kind of things. Take away the TV and all those kind of things. Those are educated children. They don't get on the computer and on the phone and things like that. They feel they're losing their lives. So these are things we have to consider when we're thinking about Liberia. Our people in Liberia are not of the standard of people in America. We got to deal with people in Liberia with empathy, compassion, understanding, and with an ideal to lend a helping hand. Our people are suffering. They are not like American people that are getting paid every week. The monthly pay that they get is not even enough to last them through the week, a month. That is why our country is so corrupt. Our people are so corrupt and begging for a handout. That's not a handout they're begging for. They're begging for a hand up. But they don't know because our leaders, our educated leaders, have no love in their hearts for our country, nor our suffering, starving, dying people. The time of the Liberian people is now, my children. Only we can rise up and stand for truth. Justice, equality, and a way of life for all of us. But the foundation must be set with our leadership. The head must be corrected before the body can live. The time of your Liberia is now. Aluta! Continue. My class is over, my children. I just hope that you realize everything I'm telling you for the betterment of your own lives before you think about our country, your lives, your families, then country. Be blessed. Aluta.